So I want to talk and show you some of the tools that we have in our structure. What I'm showing you here initially is a picture from my virtual machine, which is an Ubuntu 12.04 uh, virtual machine that is running within my Mac. And I want to be able to, to walk you through some of the basic steps of how we start the structure up. This would be basically what you would see if you loaded up one of these virtual machines. My background screen is slightly different, but otherwise looks similar. And what basically happens with this open source tools after you download it is that you can pull everything up under CAD SIP and it'll eventually load up the various tools that we use for that we're going to be using for our um, open source toolkit. Now in this open source toolkit, as it's you know, when it loads up, it loads up as si it all is it sits in Scilab 5.4.1. And all these versions could be updated, but things have worked fairly stable, so we have st stayed with it. It pulls up a window here that looks fairly typical. And for those of you who are used to MATLAB, it looks like a MATLAB window. And that's part of the point is to have MATLAB and Simulink available. As well as having a win an extra GUI, which is sort of our, we call it a call our blue GUI, which is sort of the RASP design GUI. RASP is an acronym that we've used for our, our FPA family of chips for years, Reconfigurable Analog Signal Processor. And in one GUI, it contains a number of different options and things that you can use in this system and use for, for targeting this. There are many different key buttons here to look at, one of which you talk about is you can sort of pull up a new design, you can choose a design, you can open up a particular design, you can compile program, you can take data. Um, there are different, each of these buttons have various key aspects to it. If I want to work with a particular board types, we have a few different types. I'm going to be using a 30A board, and I'm going to be using chip number 89, which is one is a board I use often personally. And then we can, from this, use multiple aspects. Now, typically, when you pull down a VM, you might actually use update. We actually have two different forms of updating the tools, where you can either do an update or do a force reset. This the sort of the modif the parts of the system that changes um, tip that change often are sitting in a GitLab uh, repository, and so it can pull that up or, or completely reset and pull up the repository from scratch. There's some level of documentation for a number of different aspects, including the type of board infrastructure that we're looking at, number of utilities that are used often, um, and each of these are an interesting discussion unto themselves, as well as GUIs for additional advanced structures, say calibration, generating of macro blocks, and so forth. But in this part, I want to just go through an initial example that gets into this basic system. And that example I'm going to start with is to take a very simple structure where I'm going to compile an on-chip DAC to an ADC and, and then read it out. So, in, and of course there are parameters that are generated. Now, what this, there's an arbitrary waveform generator. There's a measure voltage block, which is sort of the ADC block. There's a way I can run this from a simulation perspective as well, though I'm not going to show that in this case. It's a kind of a trivial result. It also preloads a vector, and I can use a predefined vector, or I could create my own. I really don't want to um, create my own, so I'll use the one that's there, so I hit no. If I look at the arbitrary waveform generator, like most of these blocks, there's actually parameters I would look at. In this case, whether it's going to repeat, what, what the sample rate's going to be, what the variable name's going to be in this MATLAB-like workspace. Nothing's going to change, I'll just cancel that. So once I've done, once I've loaded that up from the example file, it's already chosen. So you can see the chosen part put right at that part of the structure, right in the middle there. And at that stage, now I can say, well, what would happen if I took the design and now compiled it? Well, I hit Compile Design which allows me to compile it. It gives me a number of different outputs in these spots. Um, and then simply at the end, when it's all done, it says it's completed and it's ready to program. At this point, I can now hit the Program Design button. 
And at that point, we can see what the program design is. Now, normally, I wouldn't normally walk everyone through all the details of the design, but here it's kind of useful to see that um, we will end up having multiple aspects, one of which talking about there'll be an erasing, which is what you talk about, your tunneling and reverse tunneling. It'll then work on uploading uh, the data, SRAM data, and then continue to program this. So we're running this in a verbose mode so you can see the details. You can also see that one of the other key things that was done here is that down here that you can see this going off where we've made sure to select the particular FPA board. If I didn't select the FPA board properly, then it would have trouble with the communication. And the one of the biggest issues that we often find with all this tool set is not the FPA chips themselves, not the tool infrastructure itself, but rather some of the USB communication which is always a questionable space for, for many people when they're building such designs. So which is one of the reasons we have a button here for resetting the communication. We also have um, additional sort of error messages and so forth to, hint, to say if there's a communication problem so you're not surprised if there is an issue. Now a couple of the other buttons that are on here that are relevant, one of which is a view routing. The core of the tools uses, a, uses VPR, and so you can actually look at the routing infrastructure that you might imagine using in that space. You also have the ability to load and load and program Netlist, which Netlist format here is in Blif. Uh, and Blif originally was a digital infrastructure, but we've decided to use it uh, and extend it into the analog space. And so that actually allows me to do that. Or I could do it purely from a switch list. Now, what I did after this was done programming is I decided to just take data. And take data is an interesting, is a function that allows me to take any SRAM or code that's loaded up, play it through the chip, and then run it back out. All of this is actually being done utilizing the processor on chip to make this work. This is simply doing a sweep where you can see this, the initial blue line is the inputs to the sweep and the actual values that are measured out is actually through these green dots. And you might think this is a very simple measurement, just connecting two things really simple, a DAC and ADC, and it is. But remember, this is a DAC connected through to an ADC type device on the chip, which is actually compiling into the chip, which then runs through a use of the programming infrastructure onto an on-chip DAC and back into the SRAM memory through all of these data points. So in sequence, it allows you to see exactly how these tools work and the various pieces of these tools.